pod sass by putting the sass back in sassy sponsored by leader pro where you can book demos with target customers on demand and fill your sales pipeline instantly welcome to another episode of pod sass today we have gary goldstein of instinctive how are you doing i'm doing great thanks for having me chris awesome so why don't you tell us a little bit about what instinctive is what you guys do um, and then also who your target customers are so we uh we approach the market in a modular way uh document automation and management so you think of all the different documents companies use for the pre hire process the onboarding process and through termination so we're coming up with some really cool termination solutions uh, because termination is so complex it's the reverse onboarding and reverse provisioning and um and then there's how do you manage the employees as they move between one office and then the next? How do you how do you manage employees as as you um, you know give them a raise and how many different people have to sign off on it? We eliminate all the documents. We internalize an infinite combination of documents that a company uses, and we can present them in a way that looks familiar to that company. And uh, so we actually can help them emulate their culture. Um, and of course, as you know, onboarding an employee today is so critical because it's so hard to go get good qualified employees. And you want to make that great first impression in the pre-hire process, not onboarding process. Uh, we also are a complete HRS system. Uh, and then we uh, do benefits administration, small and medium and enterprise size clients. Um, our largest account is a benefit broker and their uh, largest account is... Um, they're actually, they're, they're part of the fifth largest benefit broker in the United States. And uh, they have, um, uh, their largest account has the biggest association in California. So there's about 40,000 members on our system just doing benefits administration. They have two open enrollments here during the year. And then our fourth module is the Instinctive Integrated Hub. And if this is where we have the ability to integrate to what we've identified as over 40 different categories of best of breed solutions, but now companies want them on an integrated basis. And because of this hub, we've been able to do some extraordinary things where we have one client who's distributing to uh, service providers, associations, and, and actually B to C solutions, where we're hooking together seven or eight different products and services from companies that don't do business together. But through Instinctive, they look like one ecosystem in a series of products that people can buy as an employee for an employer, as a member of an association or a consumer. And then we're the employee validated database of records. So we keep all HR and employee data in sync. That's where we get our name. Got it. Very cool. Our, target, our targeted client on the bottom end, if we're doing direct, is probably 75 to 100 employees to about 10,000 employees. Wow, okay, okay. So, so we, stream span, we, have, we have the ability to span a large segment of the population today. Wow, very cool. Um, so your, your, your available market's pretty, pretty sizable. Yeah, yeah, and, and it's flexible. So some companies come to us just for the document automation and management. Some companies come to us, as I mentioned, just for the benefits administration. And some companies come for us for, for our instinctive integrated solution and, and some companies for the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. Got it. So, and they can choose kind of like a la carte or if they want to like streamline everything into to one centralized system. Exactly. So you okay. put your data in once the employees validate data that we might've gotten from a bi-directional integration to a, a payroll system. So we're part of the ADP marketplace, which is their recognition that businesses want to buy best of breed solutions, but now want them on an integrated basis. So we're in there with about four or 500 other companies. And we're integrated uh, bi-directionally to their mid-market product called the ADP Workforce Now, mm -hmm. which is a you know what I call a vertical stack solution. Or they want everybody to buy the payroll. They want to buy HR and benefits administration, document automation and management. But you know, not all people can be all things to all. Not not all companies can be all things to all people. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. So this gives us the, our model business model gives us the ability to stay focused on what we do best continue to focus on, on on new features and functionality that are client requested. And, uh, you know, one of the things that's cool about software, Chris, is, is that you probably know, is you build software one way, expecting people to use it this way. And then you come back and you go, oh, well, I want to use it this way. Yeah. And then yeah. it comes up with new features and functionality. And we, we do that in three different buckets. One, if it's good for everybody, then we put it on a roadmap. We scope it, put it on a roadmap, and then we make it configurable. So we're configurable to the unique needs of every employer group. 
Mm. So we have the ability to turn the features and functionality on and off. It looks customized, but it's really configured. Got that it. makes us rapidly deployable, which makes us disruptive in the market. Um, the second bucket is if it's good for a lot of people, but not everybody, then uh, we'll scope it, provide them a proposal and pricing, and then uh, again, make it configurable. And then the third bucket is if um, it's really a customized solution, really specifically for the service provider or to the employer group. Um, we'll do it only, we, we, we're a custom programming shop, but we'll only do it if it leads to future monthly recurring revenues. And we've mm -hmm. got some really cool examples of how that worked out. Cool. Well, thank you for the explanation um, and, and digging a little bit deeper in terms of like what you guys offer and, and also the, the different types of buckets and customers that you guys go after. So um, before we kind of like hop into, you know, the instinctive journey and, and how things got started and, you know, the or origination story, um, we do a thing we like to call rapid fire questions just to kind of get to know Gary Goldstein a little bit more. Um, so if you're up for it, uh, we'll just jump right into those. It's just 10 really easy questions, nothing too crazy, uh, but it helps us to get to know you a little bit better. Okay, fantastic, thanks. Awesome. So first question is really simple. Uh, favorite entrepreneur and or startup story? Uh, wow, um, there's there's a, a number of them. Um, you know, Steve Jobs, obviously it's gotta be, you know, one of the top top people up there. Yeah. Um, Branson, of course, is, yeah. is is my favorite guy right now, and then <laughs> you know, I, and I I love that you know he's he's going up against Bezos and this whole whole thing, and and of course Elon Musk, you know, let me do the impossible, yeah, uh, you know, coming and putting everything on the line after PayPal to, yeah. to do Tesla, and and then also do the solar solar panel stuff, and now doing batteries and. It all kind of really nicely came together for him, didn't it? Yeah, yeah, for sure. I, I love that story too. Um, I think it was like he he took all that PayPal money and basically threw it into Tesla, SpaceX, and I think there's like a situation where you know with SpaceX where if they didn't get a, a launch up, they're going to go out of business. Um, and uh, yeah, now look at them. I mean, they could land a, a rocket right on a on a pad anywhere they want. Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. Super super crazy. Um, Another quick question here is, you know, what did you want to be as a kid? Say like eight, nine, ten years old. Um, what was that? What was that dream look like? Well, my dad wanted me to be a doctor. Yeah. And uh, you know, the day I went to him and told him I wasn't going to be a doctor, that wasn't a fun day. <laughs> um, but you know, my mom and and uh, my mom's family were all entrepreneurial. Okay. And so it just kind of was. You know, came up through high school and. Doing stuff in high school, starting businesses and uh, doing sales, I, I felt like I could do sales naturally. So I figured I was going to do something in sales. Mm -hmm. And nobody goes in the insurance business on purpose, uh, or very few people do. And so I ended up going into the securities business after working for my family business and helping them start the wholesale side of their business. And then um, uh, I went from the securities business to opening uh, to working in the Securities and insurance, employee benefits side of the world, along with life insurance, and uh, then opened my, up my own shop here in Walnut Creek. I started here uh, in in my place where I've started a lot of different companies, <laughs> some more successful than others. Yeah, and uh, you know my uh, insurance agency was the fastest growing company in the East Bay a number of years in a row before I sold it, and, and uh, I saw the internet advance to a place where it could be used as a value-added tool and service. So in 1999, 1907, I started a company called BizNet. And uh, by 1999, you, know, the, you remember dial-up modems, right? Yep, yep. Yes, we survived, it's true. <laughs> and uh, uh, so in 1999, uh, we just did benefits communication and enrollment administration and transactions because I wanted to eliminate the paper in the benefit process. I wanted to be able to communicate to people in in in. Um, the amount of information that, that was specific to them, not in general, right? Yeah. yeah. And so back then, everybody was communicating in paper, and they get these huge volumes of paper, and you get the applications, or uh, you know, for smaller groups, and you, you give them the employer group, they'd fill them out. The, the employees would fill them out. They'd give them back. Oh, there's some missing information. 
And there's been all this back and forth. It was just a big waste, right? So yep, yep. I started BizNet. Now they grew up to you know millions of dollars in revenue, and then we had over 50 employees. We sold that in 2005. Our second client in 1999, that was the dot com boom days, had about 150 employees. But you should have seen the hiring mall, right? Mm. Dot com boom days, all four walls, side to side, top to bottom. It was eBay. Yeah. You know, so our, that was our second client. Our third client was Each Trade uh, wow. because we got eBay. And then uh, we got um, Sony PlayStation and Dryer's Ice Cream, even though they were owned by Nestle and Blue Shield of California. Not only would use this for their own employees, but uh, they would take us out to any of their large group proposals and so on. So we were a national organization. We sold it in 2005. Uh, wow. Unfortunately, they missed their IPO and we got to resell it again in 2008. Our first client was a PEO. Um, and, uh, they were the fastest growing company in the country, according to 500, one year in the top 50, two other years. And that was because they were able to use our software to onboard their average size client, about 17 employees, and then manage them, uh, and then, um, pass the data. We passed the data to the ultimate software for their HR and payroll system. Got it. Um, and, uh, one of the co-founders and I have gone on to continue to try to do business in other, other iterations. He's gone on to. I grow up two other PEOs, and uh, now we're trying to do some administrative services solution using Instinctive as the base. Got it. A lot of excitement going on these days with all brand new technologies. Um, as I mentioned, uh, Instinctive uh, at this iteration is five and a half years old. We're all brand new technologies in hubs and AWS. Um, and our core, you know, because the Instinctive Integrated Hub, we're really a database to database data integration and management company. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Got it. Cool. Um, so starting, it seems like you've, you've gone and started quite a few businesses now. And uh, obviously, tech, you know, no tech and no tech. Yeah. So, you know, some of them are probably harder than others. And, and I'm sure like you go through, you know, a lot of ups and downs in that. Like, what, what do you do to kind of like motivate yourself or, you know, maybe now, nowadays it's like, you know, do the fact that you're a little bit more seasoned in that experience, like it's not as, it, you, you know, you kind of like know how to roll with the punches a little bit better, but maybe, you know, in the earlier days, you know, like what, what was the, the kind of stuff that would be motivating you or pushing you, uh, you know, to overcome some of these obstacles or hurdles because it, it constantly comes up, right? Like you're going to you do at times feel like your back's against the wall, but, um, you need to find something within you to kind of like get you over that hump. What, what's that for you? Every day, every <laughs> hour of every day. Yeah. Um, no, you know, it's a stepwise pro progression. Um, and it's a matter of getting into the right mindset first thing in the morning. And, you know, you're going to get knocked down and you got to pick yourself up and dust yourself off and, you know, keep going. Um, and, and and you don't get to the end. It's it's all about the path, mm -hmm. you know, and you got to enjoy your path. Yep. yep. Uh, and true. I always tell my 28-year-old son now, um, you know, it's all about monthly repeatable income. And uh, and that takes a while in this day uh, in SaaS companies to start generating really significant income. Yep, yep. And of course, you know, with Instinctive, you can tell our our, our competitors are really heavily funded. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a group out there, Ripley, that's raised $445 million. There's yep. Gusto, $700 million. There's, you know, of course, SAP and Oracle and... Uh, people uh or uh work day at the bigger end and then as mm -hmm. you work down there's uh ukg ultimate chronos group and um uh plan source and b swift and uh then uh ease and employee navigator for one of its administration platforms so depending on the segment depending on the size of the company i find competitors everywhere yeah yeah um do you have a do you have a favorite war story from any of these businesses that you've gone through well, I mean, uh, we could compare scars someday. <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. Um, how about this one? What, you know, kind of like when you go, you know, again, you're talking about like, yeah, you have these big competitors, you know, and you're, you're trying to, uh, you know, you're trying to compete in a landscape where, you know, they might have more funding than you. They are able to kind of like get to certain things quicker. So like, you know, what do you do? you know, given in those situations to, um, to kind of take a step back and take a more like holistic approach, maybe in terms of like what your offering is. 
Well, yeah, thank you for that. Um, you know, having uh, built a system a uh, second or third time like we have with Instinctive, you know, we've been able to reshape the this not only the hardware, uh, you know, where it housed in AWS, but you mm -hmm. know, so we're leveraged leveraging all the cloud and all the cloud technologies, open source technologies, highly secure uh, environment, multi different uh, secret things that we do behind the scenes to make sure that everybody's data is always secure. Um, so security is the number one thing. I always tell people I want to be on the front page of the Wall Street Journal someday <laughs> for the right reason. Yeah. Um, and 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 then having the ability to work with a very small team, but very dedicated. It's like a family, right? So we want, as we grow, it will grow here in the United States. We'll grow our team in North Macedonia. And then we have the ability to really become a powerhouse as we grow. So having a tight knit team mm. has been really one of our keys. Uh, not it. having too much money was also one of our keys. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, it's been a challenge, but at the same time, it's given us the ability to stay, do that, that yeah. visual piece, and then be able to execute uh, that software and then the business piece. Yeah, yeah. Um, another question we have here is, you know, you wear a lot of hats. You tend to wear a lot of hats as a, as a founder, as an entrepreneur, right? So has there been any skill sets that you've picked up along the way? Um you know, from starting these different types of businesses that you either loved or hate? Well, that's a great question. You know, um, as, as, as I've shared, I love sales. And mm. as as the business grows, the part I've missed is, is you hire a sales team. And, you know, every day I, I have to do a modicum amount of sales, right? I, yeah. There's only, I only, I only work half days these days, you know, it's just a matter of which 12 or 14 hours a day, right? Mm-hmm. And, and so you, you only, you have to do the administrative part. You have to wear the sales hat. You have to do, you know, fundraising at the point in time where I'm ready to do that. I'm doing a little bit of that now. And, um, and, and then, uh, you know, just the execution of the business. So, yep. uh, you know, I, as I grow the company, I miss the the day-to-day -day selling. Got it. Got it. And, and it's all about, it's all about, um, keeping track of what you need to be doing during that day. And so yeah. you can be very, very focused. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah. On that note too, is, you know, it, it can be hard sometimes because you're stretched, you can be stretched pretty thin, right? How do you, how do you, uh, any tips in terms of like how to balance your personal professional life? Well, uh, that's the, the best and the worst part about, you know, having the home office. Yeah. Yeah. But they know when the door is closed that that I'm that, that Gary's working. Um, I was able to see my son grow up um, because I was working, you know, different jobs and different companies and working out of the house a lot of the time. Mm -hmm. uh, for a while, I was working out of Reno, and you know, that's three hours away, uh, three and a half hours away. Got it. Got it. So I'd go up there every couple of weeks and uh, work with uh, you know high tech, low tech, and no tech companies. Got it. Okay. Um, final question here, but it's, a, but it's an important one. And it's, um, what would you like your legacy to be? Or uh, another way to kind of put it is like, you know, what, uh, what impact do you want to leave here on this world? That's a difficult one for me. <laughs> um, you know, I, I, I love what I'm doing. I, I give back. And so, first of all, I want I want my family to know how great they are. Mm. And uh, I, I want to give back. I want I want Insic to be really successful, so we can give back to the communities. We can give back to charities, mm -hmm. and we can do a great job for you know service provider companies. Almost anybody providing services to businesses, all their clients. I want the I want really happy, satisfied customers. And uh, you know I, I I I want people to know all that. Got it. Got it. Cool. Yeah. Um, family first. Family first, always for sure. Um, I agree with that a thousand percent. Um, awesome. So that's that's kind of like our series of just like the the rapid fire questions, getting to know you. Uh, I want to take a little bit of time now. You know, I think you met you brought up quite a few different types of uh, experiences in terms of like your entrepreneurial journey, right? Like having started multiple businesses. Um, 
you know, and, and now with Instinctive, you said it's about five years old, right? So, you know, like how, you know, how did you get to where you are now with Instinctive? Let's just talk about the journey before you even started it. Um, it seems like for the most part, you know, entrepreneurship was always somewhat in your blood, but like, you know, you, when you start a business doing, um, you know, like brokerage services or doing, you know, the, the financial services or insurance and you build a business and a book of clients that way, like it's, it's stable, right? It's, it's consistent. It's somewhat, you know, sustainable. Um, why, why, you know, choose to make that jump from something that's a little bit more consistent to something that like starting something brand new where obviously there's, there's a bit of a risk involved. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, and, and my answer is, is because the way I constructed the business is you know, mm. when I constructed BizNet, it was all about that monthly repeatable income. It was, uh, I, I, we were the first, we were doing per employee per month charges. Uh, we were doing setup fees and then, uh, uh, you know, additional charges for this and that along the way. So setting up a company to do repeatable monthly income was was critical to my analysis as to why I would jump into something brand new back then. Like a <laughs> I mean, we dial up modems was a wild days. Yeah. You know, we'd have to bring these couple hundred foot cords with us uh to get down the hall and around the corner because the the conference rooms didn't have internet access. Mm -hmm. So we'd have to plug into the nearest fax machine. Mm. And um and then we'd have this picture of a cloud in our PowerPoint. And here's your CRT monitors over here, Mr. Prospect. And, and you dial up through the cloud and here's here's our, our we have these tall standing computers sitting on the ground with a chain link fence around it for the first open enrollment. That was our first co-location facility. Wow. And you think of what's happening today with the with the cloud and, and AWS and, and, and Azure and, and all of the, you know, Google has, has a farm and all these different uh, you know, worldwide access on many different levels in many different countries. Uh, it's just a tremendous opportunity. I couldn't stay away. Got it. Got it. And um, walk me through kind of like how, you know, you got, I mean, I've, I feel like instinctive is obviously like a very like organic path based on what your experience was already. Um, you know, I think you're, you know, you're solving for, for issues and problems that, you probably already saw firsthand. So, you know, I think um, that part of it, I understand, but how do you get to a place where, you know, like, and, and maybe this hasn't happened yet, maybe it has, but like the idea of market fit validation where, you know, you, you have a semblance of what kind of, what, what the market needs in terms of a product, but then also you're, you're, you know, uh, efficiently uh, telling the story and telling the, the solution um, in the form of some kind of messaging to a particular audience that, that it resonates with, you know, when, when was that for, when was that period for instinctive? Um, or are you guys still currently exploring that? Well, it's an evolution, you know, yeah. it's an iteration. It's, yeah. um, you know, having been in the business before, having been very successful in the business before, when we took over instinctive five and a half years ago, we knew we'd have to completely redo the software, refocus the company to what it is today. You know, and I'm thankful for the the former owner. Um, and you know, we um, I'm thankful for my former VP of product uh, who helped me, you know, achieve the dream. And mm -hmm. you know, ha having built, as I mentioned, having built the system a second or third time, like we have with Instinctive, you know exactly what you want to be building, um, and you want to have listened to the market and gotten that feedback, and then. As I mentioned, you know, you you expect people to use the software one way, and and the modularity came out of necessity because yeah. you know it's the only way to differentiate yourself against these big vertical stack companies because uh, an HR person is not going to you know risk their job to remove everything they have to do a startup. So you 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 can't just go into the marketplace where I am where Instinctive is with a minimum viable product. Mm -hmm. Product that's been tested and 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 so on. And so you got to find the early adopters are, you know, people who are willing to stick their neck out. Um, and, and, and the expectations today is 100% uptime. 
mm-hmm. right? And the competitors are just so big. You just, uh, you know, our modularity gives us the ability to start where a company has pain, do a great job, and then offer other internal products and services or other internal or integrated partners products and services. And that and that gives us the ability to differentiate and 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 grow and listen to the client's needs. And then I mentioned the you know how by listening to their needs and how they want to use the software, then that gives us that roadmap that we talked about before. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, where is the? How many? Uh, what's the headcount or the size of the company now? Uh, there's seven of us. Seven. Okay. So you guys are still uh, you're you're very much like in the the heads down. Um, getting getting your customers in um stage of the business is that correct yeah it'll always be that way yeah 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 okay. i've got people here in the us are waiting to, to to come work for us so and they'll be backed up by our team overseas and our we'll grow our team overseas and uh so the path forward is is really straightforward and um now that we've got a proven product and uh modular product you know there's some areas that we still need to improve one so that's going to be part of the iteration Mm -hmm. um but it's it's our document automation and management is just awesome our benefits administration solution is just awesome and then our ability to hook together disparate products and services companies is unique and that gives us a lot of green grass to go after a new business got it and what's your go to what's kind of like your go to market motion right now? You know, like how are you guys generating, uh, you know, generating you know, sales qualified leads and and what's kind of like the approach? You know, it seems like obviously you guys are, are pretty lean in terms of how you're operating. So how you know, how are you guys how are you guys effectively doing that? Yeah, so we employ a, uh, a third party solution that helps us with uh, LinkedIn lead gen. OK, um, all the all the content that you see on LinkedIn is from our collaboration, all the the, the instinctive website, and then we do uh, email marketing um, in a funnel in a funnel man- manner. So yeah. we um, are marketing to about a couple thousand employers direct, and then when we get engaged, then we'll work back to their service providers to let them know that their clients are choosing us, choosing to work with us, and that gives them the idea. Hey, you know, let, let's check this company out more. Um, and so it's a multi multi prong approach mm-hmm. to uh, develop a relationship with these HR people who are very sensitive and they're very difficult to to get a hold of. Got but it. have beats. Yeah, yeah. And, and uh, we we're coming up with some really cool new tools that are going to help solve age old problems. So imagine. Um, insurance companies send out a bill to their clients every month. And if there's turnover, those bills are always incorrect. And Mm -hmm. the HR person or benefits person goes, oh my God, here's that bill again. Scratch off, these people are terminating on this date and these people were added on this date and here's a new total. And send that back to the carrier. The carrier has to reconcile their eligibility system and the billing system, which are separate and distinct. Mm -hmm. And this happens month after month after month. No end in sight. But we can stop the benefits. Yeah. So we're coming out with a solution called premium billing, automatic reconciliation, workflow, and approval. And uh, and then we're going to allow electronic payments on top of that. So as the database of record, we know who's been added, who's been terminated, and, and we can show a snapshot on a per month basis. Here's exactly what you should be paying per product and in total. And then you can click on a a carrier name and drill down to all the different plans for that carrier, click on a plan name, see all the people who have adopted that plan. And then we, with an approve button, once that approve button is packaged, it, it all gets packaged up along with the ad change report. And then it goes to the CFO or finance group for approval for payment. And then off it goes to the carrier. Got it. Okay. And we're doing some really cool things with payment too. Awesome. Awesome. Um, Cool. I, to, you know, kind of to wrap things up here, I have one more question that I would like to ask. And it's, uh, you know, where, where do you see the business in another five years from now? Right. Like, um, do you foresee it to be, you know, something where you want an exit, sell the company at some point, or is it something where you really want to kind of like take this to maximum potential and fruition of, of what you have in your mind that it can go? Well, um, 
Yeah, I mean, it's um, our market's very hot. Mm -hmm. uh, companies that are in exiting in our space are getting like six to ten times revenue. Mm. So, as uh, our goal is to raise some money now, a uh, serious seed, because uh, I put um, my own money in to mm -hmm. grow it to this point. And then that'll get us to where we could do a series A. And then we want to get to profitability by tw uh, three years from now. And once we're a profitable company, if we want to do a series B, a large round, then we'll control that round. Mm -hmm. And um, and we can be you know become a very, very big company without having to raise the hundreds of millions of dollars that we talked about our competitors have raised. Yeah, yeah. And, sure. uh, and, you know, helping, you know, a couple million employees and, all, you know, an average size client of about probably 75 to 100 employees and all their service providers, hundreds of service providers. So, you know, it's pretty, it's pretty exciting to think about how many people we can actually help. And, and not only businesses and corporations, but also, as we talked about today, associations and their members, mm -hmm. service providers and their clients. And, and then uh, some of our clients are going to be doing business to consumer sites as well. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Gary, for oh, sharing your stuff. And have fun along the way. Yeah, of course. That's the most important thing. Um, you always have to have fun. You got to, you have to be excited every morning. You know, it's not, uh, it's, it's, it's always going to be something brand new that you're going to encounter. It could be good, bad, ugly, pretty who knows you know but it's it's definitely going to be something that's different every day every so day. that's what that's why i do what i do that's awesome um well thanks so much gary for taking the time i know that you know you you get super busy so thanks for taking the time and sharing your story and uh, best of luck on instinctive in the next few years here and on the current uh, round that you're trying to raise so you know hopefully we can circle back in in a year or two and and uh, you guys are on that trajectory you know, to, to getting to that, uh, you know, hundred million in revenue. Yeah. Well, we've got some big wins that are coming and that, that have already happened. And now, uh, one of them is looking to get funded and we, we think that's, they're very close to that. And another one, um, is, is already got clients to put on the system as soon as we finish an integration of Paylocity and so on. So the, the trajectory is starting and, um, it, the, it, uh, where's my sunglasses? Got it. Got it. Very cool. All right. Th thanks, Chris. Appreciate it. Thank you.